Hi there, my name's Chris, sales manager for Sound and Vision in Bolton. We've got a new range of Philips TV today to look at. The three models are the 32 PFL 9705, the 40 PFL 9705 and the 46 PFL 9705. So three screen sizes there, 32, 40 and 46. The model we're showing here is the 40 inch version. Now the 40 and the 46 inch are identical specification. However, there are slight differences with the 32. So we'll deal with those differences first of all. If you take a standard TV, it scans at 50 hertz, which means it's 50 pictures per second making up your image. The 32 inch version of this TV is 200 hertz. So you have 200 Im images per second making up that image and that will control fast movement better for you. The 40 and the 46 inch version in this range are 400 hertz scanning. So they scan even quicker to control that fast movement. The reason you get the higher scanning ratio on the larger screen sizes is because you are more likely to know any sort of motion blur or drag in the image on a larger screen. So as I said on the 40 and the 46 inch they are 400 hertz scanning compared to 200 hertz on the 32 inch. You've also got a contrast ratio on the 32 of 5 million to 1, an extremely high contrast ratio. That determines how good the black level is on the screen. The inkier that black level, the more natural colour resolution you achieve, the better depth of field and the more detail in the darker areas of the screen as well. So 2 million to 1, sorry, 5 million to 1 contrast ratio on the 32 inch, but the 40 and the 46 inch have a contrast ratio of 10 million to 1 it's probably the highest contrast ratio you will get on any TV. So 10 million to 1 contrast on the 40 and the 46, 5 million to 1 contrast on the 32. The sound output on the 32 inch is 2 times 10 watts, on the 40 and the 46 inch it's 2 times 15 watts, so you've got the highest sound output on the larger screens. Also the 40 and the 46 inch are 3D ready, you can upgrade them for 3D technology which you can't do on the 32. Yet again, you tend to lose the, the impact of a 3D image on a smaller screen, so that facility is only available on the 40 or the 46 inch version. So those are the differences between the actual sort of 32, 40 and 46. As I said, the 40 and the 46, same specification, just some slight differences there on the 32, uh, which is basically the scanning ratio, the contrast ratio, the sound output, and the fact that they are not 3D ready on the 32 inch. The rest of the specification, they are all full HD, they'll cut with 720p, 1080i and 1080p resolution. They've also got things like wireless internet built into all three of these models. They also have um, Philips the Ambilight Spectra 3 facility. Now what that is basically, on the back of this TV, you have a lighting system at either side of the screen and also at the back um, top of the picture as well. What we'll do to demonstrate that now, we'll actually just uh, turn the lights down here to demonstrate the Ambilight facility on this range for you. Okay, so here we have a demonstration of the Philips Ambilight facility. What you have is a, uh, an array of LED lights behind the screen at the right, the left hand side and also at uh, the top of the screen as well. What that does is whatever colour you've got on the screen, it reflects that colour behind the panel onto the wall itself. And what it does is bring the movie, whatever you're watching, to life into your room for you. So uh, it really immerses you in what you're actually watching. Now to get into the Philips Ambilight facility, you've got a um, menu system on the Philips, which we'll show you in a moment how to get into. And if we go down to setup on the screen there, and then into TV settings, you'll have a facility for Ambilight and we just jog down to the Ambilight setting and you've got different settings in there. First of all, if you don't like the Ambilight setting at all, you can physically switch it off so you don't have to have it on, but if we go back into that and come down the different settings on here, you've also got different options that you can go into. You can set it just to have a warm white facility, cool white, blue, so if you want to create an, over, an overall ambience in the room, you can actually select for different colours as a preset for you in there as well. You can also have different separation of minimum to maximum where it separ separates out the colour to a wider uh, degree for you. And you've also got uh, lounge light moods where yet again you've got settings for uh, deep water, hot lava, so you can create different lighting effects uh, behind the panel uh, as well. So that's your Ambilight facility. What we'll do now, we'll just click the lights back on. We'll go through one or two of the menus on the TV for you. 
So here we are back with the TV again. So we've got, uh, first of all, the set itself, they come on a swivel base. You've got a silver plinth. Um, the set itself is finished in sort of a silver grey finish for you. The speakers are just underneath the screen here. And you've also got additional speakers on the rear of the TV set itself. I'll tell you now, the sound system on this TV is probably the, the best you'll get on any uh, sort of uh, LCD, LED, plasma TV, whatever it may be. This TV has definitely got the best sound system on it. Uh, the picture quality, uh, as you can see here, is absolutely stunning. You've got digital free view tuning built into the TV. As I said, they are full HD as well. What we'll do, we'll spin the TV around in a moment. We'll have a look at some of those sockets on, on the rear of the set. But before we do that, we'll just go through um, the remote control and some of the menus on the screen. That's the remote control you get with the TV. Beautifully styled remote control. I'll give you a close-up of that there for you. So there we go. There you have the remote control. Uh, the menu system is all controlled through that button there, which has got the little house on it there. But we'll, we'll show you the, the menu now. We'll just click that button and it'll put us into the menu system on the TV. As I said, this set has also got wireless internet built into it. So if you want to access sort of any internet content, we'll just scroll down the screen here and we've got Browse Net TV. Just press OK in the centre of the remote control. And that'll take us into the web functions through the TV. It'll just take a second to load up. And there we've got the internet on demand. We can then select whatever site you want to go onto there just by clicking up, down, right and left on the remote control keypad. And if you want to go into, uh, I don't know, Cartoon Network, just press OK. And it will go and search now for that particular website for you. And it just takes a matter of seconds to load up. And there we go. We're onto Cartoon Network uh, website. You would just press enter on there and then it will give you a selection of cartoons and so forth that you can actually uh, access and uh, display on screen. Which is just loading up now. However, we'll just come out of that just for a moment, back into the menu system. So as I said, everything's controlled through that button there, you go up, down, right and left. If you want to go into things like setup, that gets you into all the functions for the TV for both picture and sound adjustments. So we'll just click OK. And then we can go into things like TV settings. And you've got adjustments then to alter um, the contrast, brightness and colour. And whichever of those you're on, it puts the bar up at the side of the screen. Just press OK and then you can alter the contrast and so forth to however you want it. We'll just click that off the internet for a moment just so we can get back onto a TV channel. Okay, let's just go back into that menu again for you. So down to setup, press OK. TV settings. And then you can get into all the settings there for contrast, brightness, colour and sharpness. You've also got a quick setup where it says uh, smart picture on there as well. Where you've got preset modes in from the manufacturer for standard energy game. So whatever you're doing with the TV, if you're gaming on the TV, you select game mode. But you've got um, different preset modes on here and you've also got personal settings where you can go into all those settings and alter that colour, contrast and brightness to however you want it. You've also got coming down from there uh, a sound menu where yet again you've got adjustments for standard, news, movie, whatever you're doing on there, select the appropriate sound stage. But you've also got adjustments uh, independently for bass and treble and you've also got surround sound built into this TV where it'll throw the sound out and around you as well. So as I said, it has got a very, very good sound system built into this set. We'll just come out of that for a moment. What we'll do now, we'll spin the TV around. We'll just go through some of the sockets that are on the rear of this TV for you. OK, so here we have the, uh, the rear view of the, uh, the TV. The sockets here, we've got the Ethernet connection just here. If you want to hardwire it for the internet, you can do so. It has got wireless built into it. You've got a SCART socket just underneath there. And just to the right of that, you've got component, which is the red, green, blue connection, and the audio input there for the component as well. You've got coming along from there a headphone socket, and the rest of the sockets are just underneath the actual panel here. So what we'll do, we'll just tilt this forward now, and we'll have a look at the sockets just underneath there for you. So let's just take you through this now then. So what we have, that's what we were looking at before, which are the sockets on the rear of the TV. You've now got underneath the panel here, you've got another SCART socket just here. You've also got digital coaxial out, which is just here, so you can take the sound digitally out of the TV. Next to that, you've got the SCART, uh, sorry, the HDMI sockets. You've got uh, three, two, one, so you've got HDMI's there, three HDMI's in total. 
Next to that, you've got the socket to adapt this to 3D. So you can get a 3D adapter for this TV at a later date if you wish to do so. You've then got the antenna, which is just your aerial socket, which is just there. And you've also got a VGA socket, which is your PC socket, just underneath there as well. You've also got an audio input for that VGA, which is just on the rear of the TV there. So that's your audio input for the VGA. What we'll do now, you've got the range sockets just on the side of the set. We'll now have a look at those sockets just on the side for you. So on the side of the TV, at the bottom here, you've got an HDMI socket, meaning four in total. You've then got two USB inputs. So you've got anything on a memory stick you want to connect into the side of the TV, you can do so. Send photographs, music, whatever you may have into the TV. You've also got coming up from there an SD card reader on here. So if you've got a digital still camera, it takes SD card, pop it into the side of the TV. You can have your photographs, uh, whatever you've got stored on there on the TV itself. And you've also got a common interface slot. So if you want to get uh, ESPN or any pay-per-view material on there, you can do so by adding a cam card into that slot as well. So if you'd like more details on this stunning range of TV, please give me a call. My name is Chris on 01204 861 861 or go through to our website. There are hundreds more video clips on there on TVs, amplifiers and speaker systems. Or pop into one of our stores. We've got stores both in Bolton and Leeds. These TVs are on permanent demonstration in both of those stores. So as I said, go through to our website, which is sonyvision.co.uk, or please give me a call on 01204 861 861. Thank you.